For more than three hours, the opposition protested against the government and Prime Minister Rama, where tensions were high despite repeated calls for peace. Interior Minister Sander Lechai told the Parliament that the cost of the vetting process would equal $3 million, as there would need to be three phases and a total of 393 people to administer the process. Plenty closely during an international conference held in Tirana stressed that there must be more modern and efficient mechanisms used for the treatment of Albania's urban and solid waste. It's 6 o'clock on Thursday, the 28th of March, 2019. Good evening and thank you for tuning in to RTV Aura's English edition. My name is Oliver, bringing you the only daily update of the local Albanian news translated into English. Making headlines tonight, the opposition today held its latest protest in front of the Assembly Hall against the Rama government. The protest began at 9.30 this morning. At the same time, a parliamentary session was being held, and it did not go without its fair share of controversy. Many onlookers noticed considerable tension and violence between the police and the residents of the affected New Ring Road project. Protesters attempted to break the police cordon while throwing smoke bombs and firecrackers towards police officers. Meanwhile, around 1,000 police officers were on site, including many female officers. Luzin Basha and SMI Chair Monica Kriyamadi delivered their messages before Parliament, concluding that Prime Minister Eddie Rama has turned into one of the most notorious thieves in all of Europe. This declaration was made during Basha's speech in front of Parliament, where Basha declared that the Prime Minister's main trait is deception. Basha added that the Prime Minister's time has come to an end, stating, for six years, this gang has stolen from Albanians. They have increased our taxes, the price of electricity, and jailed the citizens who can't even pay their electricity bill. He caused hundreds of thousands of Albanians to leave our country. In the final moments of the protest, the chair of the Democratic Party delivered his speech to supporters at the Blue Headquarters. He said that today serves as the voice of citizens who've expressed that there simply cannot be elections held with Prime Minister Eddie Rama. Basha stated, today in this protest, you have heard the voice of the majority of Albanians who have a clear and irrevocable message. Rama must go. Our struggle and battle is opening a horizon of hope for every Albanian that will build a European future here in this country. For those who do not understand, there will be no elections with Eddie Rama. We cannot allow a pact with the Maduro of the Balkans. This battle has already begun to liberate Albania. Our resistance has started to turn every Albanian into governance and it will not stop until it becomes a reality. I pray today before you that there is no force to betray you or to betray this movement. Your verdict for Albania as part of Europe will become a reality. I will be with you in the rain and in the sun, at dawn and at sunset. We will not give up on you or your dreams to provide your children a true European democracy. This is the battle we are fighting for. We will continue the battle until victory and ultimately the liberation of Albania. Albania will have a future, but it will not be the future of Eddie Rama. It will be the future for ordinary Albanian citizens. The opposition in Albania is determined to boycott the local elections on June 30th. There will be no elections with Eddie Rama as prime minister. We will not make a pact with him. We will resist and never go back until this government is over, said Basha. Meanwhile, the opposition has warned of yet another massive protest on the 13th of April. The Socialist Movement for Integration Chairwoman Monica Kuriyamadi called for a dialogue with Prime Minister Rama in front of citizens. Regarding the withdrawal of mandates by the opposition, she said, it is true that we politicians have our faults and that we have closed our eyes and ears in the face of Rama's wrongdoings but it is better late than never. It is better late to save the future of Albanian children than to not engage in this movement. For many people, the withdrawal of mandates has been considered an extreme or hasty action by our members, but the withdrawal was the full responsibility of those MPs who decided to stand alongside the citizens. The withdrawal of mandates was the only opportunity to show that the public interest is more important than the interests of the five people led by Rama. Today, we have to fight without making any steps backwards. Politicians are the servants of the people, not vice versa. We, as the opposition, still have much to do. We've made many mistakes, but we can fix them all together. This starts with Basha and other colleagues, men and women, pedagogues and businessmen. We have to open up a new stage and we must bring a new wind of change.
Interior Minister Sander Leshai told Parliament that the cost of vetting the police force would be equivalent to at least $3 million. He stated that vetting would be divided into three phases and 393 people would be tasked to run the process. Leshai stated, you know when the vetting process in the justice system has started when already 111 people have gone through the process. However, there are about 800 people in the justice system that will also need to undergo the vetting process, not to mention the 13,000 people in the interior ministry. The underlining problem associated with this situation has to do with the time that it is available to close the vetting process. According to current law, the vetting process for 13,000 Interior Ministry employees should be finished in March of next year. Even though this phase of the process has not yet started, it is very difficult, if not impossible. This has been one of the main reasons that, the motiva that motivated the demands to government, which has now become a draft law and could modify the existing law on vetting. Another reason for the request to amend the law has to do with the large administrative volume required to enact it. About 240 full-time employees in the police force and at the Internal Affairs and Complaint Service would have to leave their regular jobs and dedicate the rest of their time to full-time vetting. Realistically, this is a very large administrative volume that carries a $3 million cost. Despite many efforts to manage urban waste, it continues to remain a big concern for the country and the environment. The people have been echoed by Minister Blendy Closey, who during an international conference in Tirana stressed that modern and efficient mechanisms for the treatment of urban and solid waste must be made available. Closey said that Albania is still far from the standards used by the European Union for waste management, while stressing that this sector should be seen as profitable for the country's economy stating, we want to enter into the European Union with the laws and conventions, but we are far from a well-managed system. If we want to make a contribution to the European family, we must treat the environment in a European way. The minister also announced that in the next two months, cleaning operations will resume so that the tourist areas are ready and clean for the summer season. Twenty-nine pharmacies across the country have been fined by the task force of the Ministry of Health. Fifteen of them sold medicines in the absence of a doctor prescription, and according to their investigation, ten pharmacies provided medicines without prescription, one pharmacy traded hospital medicines, one pharmacy had a lack of pharmacists, and two other pharmacies were fined due to their lack of security. The task force for medicines has only inspected 67 pharmacies over the past month and issued administrative violations to 29 of them. The Minister of Health and Social Protection, Ogerta Monastir Liu, set up the task force in September of 2018 with a joint control group of several institutions where for the first time members from the Order of Pharmacists of Albania are also involved in the inspection of each pharmacy. And finally tonight, many citizens say they are extremely pessimistic about the retirement fund increase that the government will make on April 1st of this year. The decision by the government was released on March 27th and states that the retirement funds will see an increase of 2.8%. Pensioners say their demands for an increase of retirement funds by 10% have not been met. However, current estimates show that as a result of this increase, about 665,000 people will benefit all around the country. And that's the news across the country today. Thank you for watching our English edition this evening. And be sure to join us again every Monday to Saturday at 6 p.m. for the latest news from Albania. Once again, on behalf of RTV Aura, thank you and have a great night.